Hi, I'm Katherine Ingram. And I'm Mark Matusik. And we'd like to welcome you to Dharma Salon. We've just been to see How to Survive a Plague, which is nominated for an Academy Award in Best Documentary. It has also won a lot of awards already. And it's about the AIDS epidemic. And in specific, it's about the, the history of the activism of the AIDS epidemic. Right. It's about ACT UP and how ACT UP was able to get drugs through the FDA at an accelerated rate. And really what happens when a population decides not to take no for an answer right. uh, and use anger uh, as fuel for, uh, for a kind of revolution. And also the power of a population who basically had a death sentence, who were therefore willing to put their bodies literally on the line over and over being arrested. I mean, I was really, I was so moved by this film, and I frankly hope it wins uh, the Oscar. Um, it was, it, it, you know, what we've just described may sound kind of technical. It is so emotional to see the history of what we all lived through and to uh, for me, of course, I was just immersed in memories of all the loved ones that I have lost to that epidemic, uh, including my beloved brother, including my cousin who was here in New York and died, um, and all so, so very many friends. Um, and I was very uh, moved to see the New York I was in California, I was in San Francisco at the time, so I kind of knew the Castro scene mm -hmm. and the, the, the activism there. Mm -hmm. But um, I didn't realize that this really was Ground Zero, Ground Zero. Oh, it, really, oh, it absolutely was. I was, I was at those ACT UP meetings. Uh, and watching this film for me was like watching my life flash in front of my eyes. I lived through uh, the AIDS epidemic. Uh, I'm HIV positive myself, so it was a very personal experience for me, very wrenching emotionally. Uh, and it also leaves you with a sense of how much further there is still to go. And it, it, makes, it gives me pain that other populations that are facing HIV don't have that kind of activism behind themselves. Uh, like who, you mean like well, in Africa? Yeah, or? like in Africa, yeah. for instance. Mm -hmm. I mean, or, and and uh, hemophiliacs weren't out there doing this. Yeah. And there are enormous numbers of people who are still dying from this virus who can't afford the drugs and don't have that engine of social activism uh, behind them. So it, it, it gives, it's a bittersweet uh, experience because obviously the drugs came along in 96 and saved millions of lives, but millions of people are still dying. Mm -hmm. And so it leaves you with this sense of, uh, one of the guys in the film says, he says, how do you feel when you come home from the war? You wonder why was I allowed to come home. It's like Aristotle defined good luck as when the arrow hits the guy next to you. Oh. So it's just, there's this sense of luck, but luck being a paradox. Yes. And, uh, and you still grieve for the people who, who didn't make it. Yeah. So, and who will not make it now. Exactly. Yeah. So it's uplifting and it's also sobering. Uh, it's a brilliant brilliant film. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it's, it's on so many different levels actually, you know. Um, it, it was also a metaphor, in a sense, for how hard won every inch of evolution is. You know? Absolutely. I mean, how you have to just battle ignorance and prejudice and greed and, and how every, you know, sort of, sort of dark force of human nature has to be conquered, in a sense, on a grand scale. Yeah, yeah, and as you're moving toward the light, as you're moving toward liberation, all the forces of darkness rise get up. Get more to, intense. Yeah, get more yeah. intense and rise up uh, to block you. Yeah, and, and of course, it, seeing that particular movement just, you know, made me think of all the other movements we now are as... Who are, which are also in life and death, you know, the mm -hmm. environmental movement, for one thing. Right. You know, all of it, just how... The, and yet, it, you're right, it was uplifting because, in fact, they did prevail to a great degree. They did, and they, and they showed that it, it could be done, that grassroots activism could be done at, even against the monolithic FDA and even against you know, the medical establishment that wanted the, to block the and drugs. The right wing crazed politicians like Jesse Helms. Oh, Jesse Helms takes a real beating in this <laughs> film. As he, as he, as, I love when they, they put a, a giant condom over Jesse Helms's house. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of brilliant. <laughs> yeah, the, it was beautiful to see those ACT UP guys, though, um, and to see them, some of them lived and some of them didn't, but 
um, it was very touching to see them as their older version selves and to see yeah. how they they have spent 20, 25 years, mm -hmm. yeah, and watching their friends die and, and being at those meetings mm -hmm. and just giving their lives over. And you knew yeah. a lot of those guys. I knew a lot of those guys, and it was it really was like watching watching my, my life flash in front of my eyes. The thing that and, oh, I let found... Let me ask you this, Mark. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but... At the end, and I don't want to give away too much because we really think you should see the film, but of course there's a reflection by some of those who lived as to kind of what now, you know, mm. they didn't expect to live. Mm -hmm. I know that that must have been the case for you. Yeah, that was a common experience, especially for people who spent all of their money expecting to die and then the drugs came along and they were broke or they had quit their jobs and didn't have a career left. So there's another paradox, right. the paradox of survival. Yes. And what happens when you, uh, you know, it's, the good news has, a, has another side to it. So it, it, it's, it's full of wisdom. It's yes. full to, it was full of, of, of a deep uh, love in, in the community. Yeah. And what I really, want, from a Dharma point of view, yes. what fascinated me was that anger, which is so often downplayed and it's so often tamped down and it's dangerous, it's fire, don't go there is the only thing that made this happen. So it, 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 it sort of runs counter to what we're taught in a lot of wisdom traditions about avoiding our anger. Yeah, in a way though, the anger really rose out of love. It was righteous anger, if ever there was such. Mm -hmm. you know, it, was, mm -hmm. it was out of the love of so many people losing their loved ones, you mm -hmm. know? And, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, that, that, that was what fueled well, it was the kind. It was the anger that comes out of oppression. Yes. Because this yes. was an oppressed group of people. Yeah. It was like the civil rights movement. Yeah. That yeah. was rage. Yeah. And it yeah. was rage in the service of love. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's I mean, a in that's the, a in the civil rights movement. I think that, for instance, Martin Luther King Jr.'s message over and over again was that of love, and that love was the conquering agent. You know. But it comes through a vehicle of aggression. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Is this was a very aggressive uh, movement. movement. Uh, as a way the civil rights weren't movement they, was they, also aggressive weren't in its they, way. Though, weren't, wasn't ACT UP um, nonviolent? Weren't they nonviolent strategies? I mean, I always just saw them laying down and getting arrested. And They were uh, nonviolent, but very much in your face. And there were people, I remember, yeah. even at the time, there were gay men and women, and just stri a lot of people, who thought that their tactics were unnecessary, mm. and why do they have to? Uh, why do they have to interrupt service at St. Patrick's Cathedral? Mm -hmm. You know, and why would they do that? It's it's in bad taste. I see. And what happened? What what this shows is that sometimes activism is has to run against yes. the There's, status quo yeah, and the, the sense the of the etiquette. The acceptable norms, yeah. Exactly. Yes, yeah. The sense of etiquette. Yeah. It's a beautiful film. It's a testament to a time that we will hopefully never see again in this country and from which we can learn an awful lot about what we're capable of when we come together and we don't take no for an answer and we trust a higher power uh, to that we're on the side of right, that we're on the side of good, and how that f can fill you. And uh, and it and it may be a kind of uh, a, a kind of um, vision of a future for us in terms of there may come a point when we are being more and more faced with our own extinction as a human species, whereby laying your life on the line in service of the truth isn't that huge a risk because you the alternative is 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 bleak as well and um, right. and it was interesting to see how alive those guys were in mm. that and mm. they spoke about that as yeah. well in yeah. the end how you know you, that may seem like a fearful thought when you first hear it but the actual I think the actual lived experience of it might be a, a very different story it's true remember what Bob Barr said at the end he said afterward as strange as it sounds to say uh, he has not found anything that's quite as fulfilling yes. as the work that he did yeah. uh, in extremis under under the gun uh, in the beginning of the epi epi epidemic. So this is to say that when you're going through something that you think is the worst thing you could be going through, it may actually also be your most engaged moment. Mm -hmm. It may be the time that you actually come alive yeah. and there's a way that we open up in those, those, uh, those moments of life and death. That's yes. when epiphanies happen. Yes, yeah. All right. We'll see you next time. We're here in New York City. We'll be uh, reporting on the ground for you. Bye from Dharma Salon. <laughs>